On to item number two, which is to commence at 1730, which is apologies for absence. Do we have any town clerk? Oh, it was used from Councillor Scott, um, who is unwell. Okay. You want me to move to accept that, Jill? Um, please, yes. Um, I will propose that we accept that. Can I have a second for that? Um, Chair Parrish has stopped that. Thank you. That's carried. Thank you, Chair. Item number three is to confirm the minutes of the Town Council meeting held on the 4th of October. These are for accuracy. Um, I'd like to propose them. Could I have a second, please? I have a second. Thank you. Any comments or questions about those minutes? Can I have a hand, a fair hand to adopt those minutes? Thank you. <coughs> second of October, thank you. <laughs> item number four is to receive any declarations of personal or pecuniary interest um any new declarations obviously relating to the business on tonight's agenda So item number five is town mayor's announcements. We're going to do this in two parts. The first part is um, a really nice bit, which is to award um, the youth sports grants. Um, obviously, you've all had your money electronically, but we do have the big check for the vote opportunity. Um, I would like to go through each of you one by one. If you could just invite you just to stand up, um, say who you are, and say a few words about your grant and what it means to you and what we're doing with it. So first, um, we're going to start with Atterswood Junior Football Club, Rojas. Well, I'm not going to be invited to first. <laughs> <laughs> what was the grant? Um, good evening, Council. Um, thank you very much for this grant. Uh, there's a whole lot of us. Give you some idea. We've got over 300 uh, young children ranging from the age of six right up to 18. Um, and uh, we've got roughly about um, 18 teams. Um, obviously, we play in different leagues. We play at five different venues. We haven't got our own ground. But I would say 90% of the children that are in Ashesford Junior Football Club are in that club from Tom and Trinity. So it is legal. Believe me, it goes to the streets of children. Um, we've been going for, well, I've been going for about, uh, well, longer than 10 years, obviously, but um, well, I've been doing the job at Ashesford for 10 years, and believe me, it's very, I moan about it, but believe me, it's very, very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. I have two grandchildren that have gone through the rigmarole from going from five to 18, and they thoroughly enjoy it. And I'm a great believer in sport, um, added to um, children's education. I think it's so important. Uh, but thank you again. This this money goes to various items, but we did apply for it for new goals, and it's been dropped. Um, we paid out um, money for a ground over at Cloud End, would you believe? You know, we're even in venturing out to different counties, but um, they've gone up and it's superb. So thank you again. Much <coughs> thank, you. thank you, Ray. Um, East Minster Sports Club, Richard Lamar. Hello, good evening, everybody. <coughs> um, uh, I'm a trustee of East Minster Sports Club, and um, just want to say thank you as well for the um, contribution. It's not very often you put an application in and you get a little bit more than you're expecting, um, but uh, we are, we've got a significant um, project, uh, just to remind those that may not be aware, we're trying to build four covered adult tennis sports. Uh, on the top tier of the netball courts, for those of you that know the site and the sports club. It's a community club, it's not a private members club or anything like that. It's a community. And in this particular, we want to make the sports available um, for the schools. You know, we, we know the sports representation from the schools very well. And give free court usage to the schools during the uh, daytime so that the schools can come up and have a go with paddle and just. It, it's not too onerous a sport exercise wise, and it's probably um, not like squash, which is hard work. Tennis is very hard work, says me looking at John. <laughs> um, and um, so it's not so much, uh, uh, it's not too onerous on the exercise front. So hopefully, we'll get a lot of people that will want to give it a go, which is what we're trying to do. 
uh, and th this, these funds will be spent on coaching and support on our time for those, in those uh, children um, as we get them built, and we're hoping to get them built in May or May time, hopefully. We can get raised the money on this. But uh, Planning Commission, which is in, I don't know if that's come through here yet, but it's, uh, it's in, it's just gone in just before Christmas. Okay, thank you very much. The funds are much appreciated. <coughs> Uh, is this the cr cricket, uh, cricket club? Christian Hunt. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for the invite. Thank you very much for the answer. Um, I can uh, tell you that it will be completely delivered towards the All Star ECB program, which, of course, many of you are aware of it, um, specifically for children who are five to eight years old. Um, in order to cover the sad eventuality of the fact that perhaps that sport isn't delivered at their primary school. Um, so it gives them the chance to get involved in the sport that perhaps they didn't have to in the past. Um, many of you may not be aware that unfortunately when you, when you purchase what choose to do um, the All-Star programme, right, all the money goes to the ECB, not one penny goes back to the clubs that deliver it. Um, and when you have between 50 and 80 children that we have, who are five to eight, you need a number of coaches in order to deliver it. Mm. So the entire grant will go towards the coach doing the delivery of that programme. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you. Crawley Down, Gatwick Football Club under 10s, uh, Ben Crawley. Um, yeah, just a massive thank you for our grant. Um, mm -hmm. We're inspired for it primarily for um, this time of year, every season since the start of the year, as well, start of May to the under five. Um, every year, this time of the year, we miss out on massive football due to weather. Um, I'm a member of the East Country Sports Club myself, so we thought we'd apply for a grant that would help us be able to pay in, pay to train and play games at the sports club. Um, a little bit of extra equipment is going to be um, very handy as well. Um, half our team is actually from East Winter, we're over Crawley Down. Um, so, yeah, we want to keep everything local and keep the, keep the boys playing um, as much as we can throughout the season. So, thank you. Brilliant, thank you very much. We've got East Grinstead Target Shooting Club, Mike Eckerton. Uh, oh, good evening, all. and uh, my name is Brian Corkadale, I'm the Club Chairman and Club Secretary of the <coughs> um, Again, as everyone else, thank you very much for the, the grant. Um, everyone at the Football Club, East Country Town, uh, incredibly volunteer, is now getting paid for what we do, so it's an awful lot of work that goes into putting football onto the East Country Town um, by not that many people. Um, so any grants, any money that is raised, um, takes a lot of raising. Um, we've been approached by a couple of uh, parents to, to start two new youth teams next season. 
for the complimentary we've already got. So uh, next season, we're looking to start another 12 year old in the 17 months, 17. So uh, cost involved in starting a team from scratch, you can have two and a half grand a team, just before you put them on. So it does take a lot of getting from various places. So uh, a, a grant like this really makes a difference to a club like us. So that, that's what it's going towards. It's, uh, it's going towards training for coaches and things like that to go through uh, the coaches qualifications and supervising the team. Like that. So that's where the, the money can be used. So again, thank you very much for that. Thank you. That one? Yeah, yeah. So what we're going to do, gentlemen, we're going to go down to one of our little stores. If you want to come on in, I've got the big photo of the desk from there. Do you want to be here? Oh, yes, of course. Do you want to be here? Do you want to be here? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to go on to is um, just to discuss some of the events and things and highlights of the last few months as, as mayor. Um, it has been a very, very busy few months. <laughs> um, everyone of past mayors warned me that it would be busy. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't quite appreciate quite how busy it would be, but equally how absolutely rewarding it would be. It has been some of the best months of, of my life. Um, seeing some of the charities and organisations within our town has been truly inspiring, uh, humbling and eye-opening. I'm going to go through a few of the, the items on here. But first, we'll start with a bit more positive. I'd like to thank everyone that came along and supported some of my charity events, from the barn dance, you all look fabulous, um, uh, through to my um, carol concert and other events. Thank you all the councillors that supported and uh, my deputy who has been by my side for all of it. Thank you. Um, attending events as mayor isn't always some of the big things. It can be some of the smaller tiny little organisations that only have a handful of members and going along and supporting them like the chess club we gave them a small grant and it's amazing to see the chess club in East Grinstead the, the community and the love that they have for the game and being together and an activity for sometimes slightly older demographic in the town is, is great they were a great group of people I went to a premiere of a film made by a local filmmaker called Broken Eyes um, and he'd, he'd managed to get it in, um, in, in the cinema in East Grinstead. He's, he's grown up in the town. I've, I've known him actually a long time in the town. And it was, it was great to see this guy. It's won, it's won national awards, this film. East Grinstead talent out there. It was great to go and see. One of the ones that was really <clears throat> incredible was the night that uh, my wife and I spent out with the street pastors. It rained in a biblical manner. <laughs> It was, it was entertaining. There was um, a lot going on in town that night as well. It was a payday weekend. There was a boxing match at Check and Me. There was a, uh, a boxing match streamed live on telly. And there was a lot of activity. And to see the love and fearlessness that the street pastors went out with to protect people and handing out flip-flops when girls had lost their shoes and bottles of water to help people that maybe had had a little bit too much enjoyment. Um, was great but the thing that really struck home was especially with young girls they saw the street pastors were out 
and you could see their body language change. They knew that somebody was there watching out, making sure they're okay when they left the, the pub or the club. And seeing that was, was amazing. And the work they do all through the year in all weathers should be applauded. One of the fun ones was going to talk to the beavers. And I love talking to the kids, going to talk to the beavers and the schools and the absolutely brilliant questions that they ask me, absolutely bonkers questions. Um, I love that. It just makes me smile and the enjoyment in their faces is, is lovely. Another great one was um, a very busy weekend in the middle of November was the Lions PSA testing that was held here. And... Uh, Thank you to Councillor Whitaker for his hard work on, on, on that day as well. But watching the men come through to be tested rather sheepishly in large numbers that were sold out um, was incredible. And the percentage of people that would have, something would have been flagged and that they go and get checked and it saves a life. There were people there volunteering who had, their prospect cancer had been caught by this testing in the past. And as men, we are, let's be honest, a bit rubbish at doing this sort of thing. And... The work the Lions are doing to help the people in our community there is huge. And that was that was great to see. So well done to them. Then we had the Remembrance Sunday, which I think everyone who walked in that parade can acknowledge that Steve Finstead comes out and supports that <coughs> in a way that is so inspiring. It is lovely to do. It's strange to say it's lovely to do on a, on a sad event, but I'm so proud of East Grinstead and so proud of all of you guys turning out to that. Thank you. Then we had the big reveal. Wasn't that amazing? I mean, the amount of people, it was standing room only from the Robert Dyer's crossroads right up to the top of the town. Mm -hmm. I was one of the founding people that started out one of the first 10 shops that ever did it when I had my shop in the high street. And to see it grow from an idea where we thought we would just paper up the windows, everyone would think we were closing down and then suddenly go, ta-da, here's our Christmas windows, to the event it has become with the, the tree lights going on and the Christmas lights going on. And to see everyone volunteering and helping and working there was just brilliant. I mean, to turn the lights on to that sea of people in my very tasteful suit was just lovely. The suit, by the way, has grown its own personality and people started requesting the suit along with the mayor to events. Um, one that was slightly out of town, but very important to our town, was the St. Catherine's Hospice opening to go to their new facility. Um, if you get a chance in any capacity to go up there, hopefully in a capacity of councillors, not in the capacity that it's required, um, it's amazing what they have built and the future proofing that they have there now to provide more end of life care for local residents is it's incredible. The, the extra care that it will be able to provide and the better working conditions for staff and the more types of people it can take now is great. And that the generosity of so many people donating and supporting that has meant this has happened. And they're now, you know, they're moving patients in, patients are in there. Go over and have a look if you can, because it's, it's brilliant. Um, fun one was the Saffa concert at Chequer Mead. That was lovely. That was a really nice one that got everyone feeling very Christmassy. That was great to see them in, in Chequer Mead. It makes me again so proud of how great Chequer Mead is, um, along with the Panto, which was just incredible. Oh, come on. Someone oh, no, it wasn't. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Lee. Oh, you. Thank you, Lee. Oh, You're very oh, welcome to have that. It's all right. We can now put that behind us. Um, <laughs> So that, was, that, that, that was great. Um, a lovely one was the, the, the Sackville College Carols. Um, if you ever get a chance to go and do that, buy yourself a ticket next year, go along to it. Um, to sing in the little chapel there is, is lovely. And then halfway through, they stopped and did a, a reading all about Good King Wenceslas that was obviously written there. And then to go and see where that carol was actually written um, was, a, was lovely. That, that facility and what they do there, they need people to go along and buy those tickets and support them because it, it requires the, all the financial help it can get. And it is so beautiful in the centre of our town. Another one which I know is very close to Councillor Peacock's heart here, which is the Being Neighbourly Christmas Lunch. What a fantastic organisation that is in our town to help people. I always struggle with saying this, with social isolation. Isolation. That's a very difficult thing to say. 
but meeting and I went around and chatted to everyone that was there and their stories of, of genuine loneliness in the elderly in our in our community they just without that they would be really stuck of who to talk to and their friends and going out having a Christmas dinner so kindly supported by Dunning's Mill paid for by the people having the charity quizzes there that they that they pay, take the money and, and pay for this meal um was great watching these 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 elderly couples and people on their own um getting slowly more drunk and enjoying their Christmas <laughs> festivities was was lovely to see then we got into some sort of more serious ones with the the food bank bag pack in the town which is a military operation um I'm sure many of you have been to the food bank at the Jubilee if you haven't go and have a look those guys run that so well um it's such a shame that in our town, we still require that food bank to be as big as a professional as it is. Um, and they need, they need as much help as we can give them. But that, that bag pack, if you get a chance to next year, they're always looking for volunteers to go along and help. And that was a really good mm -hmm. thing to do before Christmas. Slightly eclipsed by the 23rd of uh, mm. December, the, the Greenaway Foundation Christmas not bag pack, but the, 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 sorry, the putting out of, of food and delivering of food. It started with five families and there was an over 900 families delivered to this year. Full Christmas meal, um, presents up to the value of 25 pounds, plenty of selection <coughs> for children. Um, Councillor de Bell and um, his wife were there and you were there as well, mm -hmm. leader. And to see the effort that goes in and the need was exceptional. The bit that affected me and my wife the most was the bit slightly outside, which was a huge line of these that were for people suffering from domestic violence or in hiding from it. And Claire and I were given the great privilege to go and deliver some of these. We went right up to Rygate and Red Hill and out and about delivering some of these to, to people. And what they did was to give Christmas to people that had no hope of a Christmas and to those children. And that was amazing. I think the more that us as councillors can support these sort of initiatives and help, the better. Um, and although it was the terrible, sad feeling and to see it was, was devastating, the need for it, it made me really feel so grateful for everything I have in life and how much we have and how many of us have. Mm -hmm the simple things that are missing from so many people and it was incredible i had a couple of other ones this this year already kicked out the blocks early with the Inverhorn school's a level presentation which was amazing and um, lots of very hungover kids dragged in to collect their uh, their their a level certificates before they go back to university we're sitting there with their parents looking like kevin the teenager that was great but then yesterday i attended uh, the first veterans breakfast at uh, at, at uh, the Sussex pub and it was it was great the work that Paul Gree and his committee have put together there to bring that to the fore is amazing veterans that <coughs> can't get to call where the nearest one was that live in the street speed and they struggle to get over there for a meal <coughs> reasons now have somewhere they can drop in they can seek help they can meet people they can discuss and already from conversations yesterday we're helping a few people that have come out of the woodwork so um I want to have a huge thank you to Paul and his team for putting that together. It was great. But as I say, it's been it's been busy. That is just a little highlight of some of the events, but all of them are amazing. And as councillors, we are given the privileged position to help these people to look behind the curtains of our community. And we have an amazing community. The volunteers, the people that are helping without any thanks for anything is, is amazing. So Thank you to all of you for your support. And I know I've whitted on a little bit on this, but it was a, a, a long one and there were a lot on there that I wanted to give thanks and highlight. So thank you. Looking forward to it next year, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, item number six is to receive such communications as the leader, the council may decide to lay before the council. So Helen, over to you. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, so mine is short and sweet. <laughs> So you'll all be pleased to know. So um, really just a couple of things um, come to fruition that we want to share and put out there that um, St Barnabas is just about ready to uh, start renting out at the end of January. They've worked incredibly hard. Sorry, I'm going on to that. 
<laughs> it has now been renamed. That was my next line, Tower Clock. Um, and it has now been renamed the Sunnyside Barn. So um, we will be calling it um, by its correct name um, moving forward. And hopefully we'll start to get some rentals in there. And then we'll have an official opening at some point where we'll all go there. And obviously the mayor will be able to touch and talk if they're only all driven. So that's fantastic that that's going to be up. A little bit out of time still, but it's going to be up by the new time scale that we did spend. So that's fabulous. Um, I really want to thank all of the um, council officers. They've worked incredibly hard over the last year. I really want that noted, how much they work to support us and all the things they do for the community themselves as part of their role, but also supporting us and doing our role. So I really want to thank them. Um, and they do a lot of, especially this time, well, the end of the year, the Christmas period, they have an awful lot of jobs to do as well as their jobs. Um, and But it did finish off extremely well with, we had the Christmas lights turn on, there's so many of the officers out there as well as us <coughs> supporting it. Um, the new lights look amazing, so it's great to see those up, um, which is fantastic, especially on this building, they look phenomenal. Um, and also, we finished it off with um, glitter mince pies for those that attended that. It was a really super morning, and all the officers were out there being to thank all the people that do support um, within the council. My final thanks goes on to all of you, all of you councillors. I'd like to thank you um, for all your work on your committees. I would particularly like to mention this time round, though, um, the new committee, the Environmental and Sustainable Travel. Um, so I'd really like to thank all the members on that. Thank you to the chair of that, Steve, for bringing that to fruition. It's a lot of hard work. We've had lots of meetings. We're now going to February every month. Lots of lovely projects that we can get our teeth into moving forward. So that committee this year is um, that we'll have some projects that we can start and finish small achievements to get us on the map of doing something new. So thank you to all of you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leader. Item number six. Are there any questions for yeah. Councillor Well, I've got a question as such, but I would like to take the opportunity to thank the Leader and the officers <coughs> for progressing so far with us now on Sunnyhill Farm. And that, I'd also like to thank uh, Dick Sweatman, who was previous chapter and leader, who helped kick that project off. And I think it's a congratulations to everyone that that's been concluded so quickly. And we do have a centre, a low cost equity provision centre, a community event, and that's what we So thank you to all of you for putting that forward. It's not a question, but it's thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Any other questions, please? Item number seven, then, is to dispose of any business outstanding from the last meeting. There is none. Item number eight is principal council update from West Sussex County Councillor Ian Gibson. Unfortunately, Councillor Gibson has been unwell and his voice is slightly weakened at the moment, so he submitted <coughs> a written report to be read by the town clerk. I do believe that maybe your voice is strong enough to answer any questions. I, I, I can follow in those questions. Brilliant. You're a, <coughs> you are a trooper, Councillor. So, um, Town Clerk, would you like to read the statement? Clear my throat before I start. The introduction of a booking system at the recycling centre in February has been confirmed. I endeavoured to call in the decision for review on the basis that the Cabinet member had not presented any evidence of need, as had been the case for its introduction at the Crawley Centre. The call-in was supported by a Burgess Hill, Lib Dem and two Chichester-based independents. I did not receive any support from any of the local councillors. The request was dismissed by the county monitoring officer. The key reason was that the decision had been discuss discussed and endorsed by a scrutiny committee. The committee discussion was actually inconclusive, but the monitoring officer's decision is finally. I used the opportunity of written questions for the December Council to set out the information I believe is required to support a decision to introduce a booking scheme and ask whether the Council had this. The question and the answers can be found on the West Sussex County Council Council meetings web page. On the positive side it turns out that even without a booking system East Grinstead has the highest recycling rate of all the centres at 84% and only drops to second when green waste is excluded. It's difficult to see how the booking scheme is going to improve these figures, given that East Grinstead is already ahead of centres operating at the booking scheme. The major pressures on the current year budget are the children's, young people and learning and skills portfolio. These were predicted to be around £20 million overspent on a £200 million annual budget at the end of quarter two. 
This overspend is in addition to the continuing growth in the Education Direct Support Grant, which has held off budget. Quarter three figures should be available shortly, notably the handover of the Woodland Mead Special Needs School has been delayed twice. The Council will be setting the increase in Council tax at the maximum allowed, 3% plus 2% for adult social care for the 24-25 financial year. The main pressures for setting a balanced budget are the increases in number of special educational needs students and their home to school transport costs. There is also significant cost increases in capital projects. The new four form entry secondary school at Burgess Hill Brookley is being retendered after no affordable bids were received in response to the first tender. The specification essentially is a passive house school and has not been changed. Although the Inverhorn application is being progressed and includes significant new sports facilities for Inverhorn School, there is no progress on the proposed relocation of the lower school from Windmill Lane to Inverhorn Lane. The inflationary increases in building costs will push up costs of, the, of both the new building and the maintenance work which is needed at Windmill Lane. Against this background, there is expected to be a significant pressure on Year 7 secondary school places this autumn, and a bulge class is being planned at Imberhorn Lane with the intention of a permanent change to an 11 form entry. The roadworks at the Park Road, Maypole Road Junction are the implementation of a community highway scheme to make the crossing from Crescent Road safer. Frankly, the layout revisions being implemented are not what the requesters wanted. The changes will force residents heading to Halstead Park and other schools to cross Park Road and then Maypole Road, rather than just crossing Park Road to the western side of Maypole Drive. There is a lesson here about being careful what you wish for. The community highway scheme now has no fixed dates and the applications are evaluated immediately. Implementation of anything other than the most minor works like painting the highway will require the support of Section 106 funds. I cannot raise requests myself, I can only approve requests raised by others. There is one outstanding CHS request in Imberhorn, which is for pedestrian refuge to make crossing at the A22 London Road safer by Stream Park Fell Water Court. This scheme is unlikely to be considered until the outcome of the 22264 corridor study is known at the end of the year. If I can just inter um, intercept at that point, that CHS has now been submitted. So if you're not aware of that, Councillor Gibson, that has gone in. And I will be meeting with them shortly. No, no, I appreciate that. But it has been submitted um, and uh, it's been submitted by this town council. <coughs> Regarding the A22 A264 corridor study, this was expected to conclude the review of previous studies by the end of the year, but no reports have been issued or announced and there have been no further meetings of the steering group. I'm continuing to monitor the plan planned resurfacing of Heathcote Drive and the Duke's Head roundabout next financial year. I do not have dates at the moment. Currently flooding is a greater concern than potholes, but I would encourage everyone to report potholes on the West Sussex County Council pothole webpage as soon as they emerge. The county target for repairs is 28 days. Residents will be able to claim for damage if the pothole is not fixed by then. The county is paying out on a large <coughs> number of claims from last winter. The process is slow. I think most residents know to take photos and keep receipts. With more local bus services being cut, particularly link links to West Hoathly, <coughs> I thought it was worth mentioning that the county reintroduced a book of bus service around Chichester last autumn. The Mead buses have no fixed routes or times. Customers book on a day using an app called Pingu and have to be prepared to wait. This could be something the council should be pressing the county to, to introduce here, given the need to reduce car usage. The county is continuing to roll out EV charging points in partnership with Mid Sussex District Council and Connected Curb. The focus has moved from car parks to residential streets. My experience is that residents don't want them because of the loss of parking spaces. Some councils are <laughs> testing systems like Charge Gully, which enable houses without parking to charge their vehicles on the road in the front of the house with the charging cable set in a secure channel cut in the pavement. This seems like a good solution, although you can't always park in front of your own home. The, the county's upgrade of its business management systems covering finance, procurement, HR and payroll to Oracle Fusion has run into some problems associated with data cleansing and the transfer of records. The program is currently being reassessed. This is an activity which is expected to deliver major savings in administration costs mm -hmm. for the council. 
The county is already looking ahead to May 25 elections and is holding a number of beer council events. The nearest to East Grinstead is in Crawley on the 20th of February at 6.30 p.m. That's the report. <coughs> <laughs> Has anyone got any questions for Councillor Gibbs Thank you, Joe. Um, yes, uh, I'd just like to uh, thank Councillor Gibson for his work on that recycling. Um, uh, uh, although um, <clears throat> it was uh, uh, not what the answers that we all wanted, but I would also li like to um, uh, say to uh, committee that you can actually now cycle to the recycling centre with your refuse if you wanted to, and there will be, your rubbish will be taken away, and you can cycle back home afterwards, <laughs> which you weren't able to do beforehand. Thank you. Thank you. What image of you cycling shopping bags on the house? <laughs> 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 yeah, so I too would like to thank Councillor Gibson for his uh, sterling work in the board and Getting Zet Catfield, a fantastic piece of kit that has just got three of them. We saw it in action in the summer, fantastic. Uh, and it's by some of brilliant temporal drops. I'm looking forward very much in the next quarter of time of the year to the full winter. <laughs> if I can just say, Chairman, that um, I actually got an email this afternoon. I had a uh, question just about what was happening with both Peacock Drive and the, and the Duke's Head Roundabout, which is, you know, sort of also an area of much discontent amongst residents. Um, they are both out for tender at the moment um, in order to, so that the, the financials will be there and the plans are there for the new financial year. Um, so I will, as soon as I have dates, I will start to tell everyone because it will be major disruption. Okay, thank you. Yes, it's, yeah, this is the other side of the problem, isn't it? You fix one problem, it replaces one temporary one. Yeah. Any yeah. other questions at all? In that case, uh, Deputy Chairman, I would like to do a full thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to thank Councillor Gibson for his very comprehensive report and town clerk for reading it so well. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, you, uh, a, lot, a lot of work goes unnoticed, uh, and we all know that um, you put a, a shift in uh, for us for that uh, county, and uh, we'd like to thank you for that. So thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, item number nine is to receive and consider the minutes of the committees. Um, we're going to start with uh, Councillor Odie for planning and <coughs> for um, E and ST as well. You can do oh, that all, in, all in one go. Save you standing up and down, up and down, as you're a jack in the box tonight. So, <laughs> Councillor Odie. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Chair. Um, yes, before I begin, I, I would very much like to uh, thank <coughs> uh, both committees for their uh, work and their uh, efforts over the uh, planning and the environment of sustainable travel. Um, it's been, uh, the, from a planning perspective, it's been a very eventful 2023 and uh, 2024 looks like it's not going to change. So uh, I look forward to that um, and uh, with excitement and enthusiasm and optimism, um, I would like to uh, uh, recommend uh, these minutes, uh, that we receive these minutes on block if that's okay, committee. Um, uh, first time in planning uh, meeting, 16th of October. Uh, page numbers 91 to 95, minute number 167 to 173. Uh, planning meeting on the 6th of November 2023, page numbers 99 to 103, minute number 182 to 190. Uh, planning meeting 27th of November 2023, page numbers 108 to 116, minute numbers 202 to 208. And planning meeting on the 18th of December. 2023 minute uh, page numbers 134 to 138 uh, and minute number 246253. Just a second. Well, I have a second from the committee. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Tom. Any questions about those minutes at all? That is now a show of hands to adopt those minutes. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes. Um, again, thank you uh, to uh, the committee for the environmental and sustainable travel. It's a very exciting committee, and uh, I know that 2024 is going to bring some really cool things coming to the Venus Council, so I'm very excited about that. Um, I'd like to uh, again put all of these um, minutes uh, through on block if that's possible. The uh, meeting on the 19th of October, page numbers 96 to 98, minute number 174 to 181. Uh, the uh, meeting on the 23rd of November. Page numbers 104 to 107, minute number 191 to 201, 
and the meeting on the 21st of December, 139, page numbers 139 to 143, minutes and numbers 254 to 264. Thank you. Can I have a second for those, please? Thank you, Councillor Belzik. Any questions on those minutes at all? No need to show of hands. That's carried. Thank you, Councillor Rody, for chairing a lot of meetings. <laughs> <Well done. laughs> uh, next, I have uh, Councillor Whitaker for public services. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I only have for one meeting, but it was a full two hour as usual, uh, a jam packed meeting. Um, uh, first of all, um, I'd like to thank uh, my boss here, Councillor Reid, for, for some fantastic support, and particularly to the council for producing the public services extensive report and research and coordination, which is very much needed from uh, effort there. Um, so we've touched on just the, some of the subjects that are in the minutes. Pharmacies to uh, Lloyd's Farm for Sale, so that the matter has gone through the town and the restructuring successfully. Um, there's a new uh, dispensing machine down at the Lloyd, uh, so the farm <coughs> in Selbridge. We haven't seen it and had a look, but it's a uh, very good bang. Uh, then touch the uh, council did, and, uh, and also touch the bell, touch the Russell for the road surfacing progress continued in the second half of this year, which is, which has been uh, superb. Uh, so hopefully that progress continues. We also touched on the open spaces contract, uh, now awarded by the district council to uh, Glendale, uh, and, and the impact that that could and maybe will have on the town council and its outside services team. So the monitoring the project hopefully it will start some chapter that was just started uh, in January uh, last week. Um, the rail ticket obviously for the town council put in a substantial consultation, so we're, we're delighted that uh, the government has backtracked on that. Uh, network rail and, and rail line staying open for the moment. We noted the CCTV increased <coughs> costs of via the district council of that, and, that, and that's had to be absorbed in our budget going forward uh, for the next financial year. Police, as always, um, is, is a major discussion point. We welcome Doug Johnson, who's the regional sergeant out of the, uh, the, the Corley station. He was very good. Chris Lovelock is our senior PCSO in the town. And, we know he puts himself about a lot and uh, you know, we see them a lot and, and they're achieving things. Um, we, we put it to the police that there is town intelligence uh, that all councillors get from time to time and there are various points have been raised, Councillor Bell, Councillor Hughes and others who put that to the police. So um, if we have specific evidence base, we can forward those via the town clerk to the police and they will pass on it. Um, we were delighted to have the new chief executive, that's uh, uh, Prince George, and uh, uh, in for uh, uh, Stanley, who's been, he's, I think he started in September. Very, very impressive as the whole committee work. We're very impressed with him. He's got a very good DNA, um, got lots of good ideas. And the feedback we've got, I think, so far are, are very appreciative of, of, of his personality and charisma and hopefully ideas going forward. Combined with that meeting, very crucially, we still hold, trying to hold mortality proof to the fire uh, in, in terms of um, critique. Um, so we had the, the town clerk we persevered for six months to get NHS integrated care board into this chamber. So we have Penny Ford, who's the regional MD for West Sussex NHS. <coughs> she she came, uh, attended on Zoom. But we also um, had uh, Dr. Patel, who's the senior partner at Motor Hill Surgery. Because what we found through communication from the town clerk and the chair and vice chair uh, and the deputy town clerk was that Motorfield are significantly impacted over the past year with, with the position with modality and the um, special measures that effectively they are in and, and take a change from modality to Motorfield. So, so we wanted to fly the flag for Motorfield with the, with the ITV. So that was successfully done on the evening. We had, had a very good cross, cross debate. Um, we had an East Grinstead Food Bank uh, town where you, you touched on that and you made the initial introduction with them when you visited, I think, in September. So we, we, we had them and they did a very good presentation. Um, effectively, they restructured since COVID. Uh, quite a lot of new people, new, certainly a lot of new systems. We've got a new app in, lots of good ideas. Um, uh, uh, they they had uh, external consultants coming in to do systems and advice and financial advice. And the whole, the whole service has spread from just providing bare essentials and food to way more than that now. So, so, so I'll, I'll echo what the town manager said to, to support them, still based at QB. Um, so we're, we're continuing to support them going forward. 
they want to introduce a local bank that has a source in Wales that seems to help out some of their some of their clients as well. Um, uh, and also, I have a select of two families to talk about. Uh, Sunnyside Barn uh, now, uh, we, we and, and, we, and we work there, so that's great. And finally, we've we already mentioned uh, the uh, recycling centre. We'll discuss that, um, but obviously that decision has been taken. So again, we'll continue to monitor that. So thanks to the whole committee um, uh, for, for those concerns. I'd like to propose the minutes from the 30th of November for adoption pages 117 to 123 inclusive, minute numbers 209 to 221. Thank you. I have a second for that. Um, any comments, any questions? In that case, can I have a show of hands, please? Thank you. Thank you for that thorough report there. Um, Councillor Doughty, please, for the interim Thank you, Chair. And thanks to Robert Plastic for hosting the I won't go through the whole agenda, but it was, it was packed. And, um, <laughs> And we've got a wide range of exciting and important projects to look forward to uh, this coming year. Uh, but I'd like to take a minute for the meeting that we had on the 7th of December, page numbers 124-28 and the minutes number 220-225. Thank you. Can I have a second for that, please? Thank you, Councillor Reid. Any comments on that at all? Okay, can I have a show of hands to adopt those minutes? Thank, Thank you. you. And last but not least, Town Leader, could you... Uh, for finance and general purpose. Thank you, Town Mayor. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'd like to, I'm not going to make a deep speech, you'd be pleased to know I feel like I've packed one my thank yous. So, um, as Chair of the Finance and General Purposes Committee, I would like to propose the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of December 2023, pages number, <coughs> I need my glasses, are 129 to 133. Minute numbers 226 to 245. <coughs> Excuse me, I have, I'd like to propose those. Can I have a second for those, please? Thank you, Any questions, please? No, no show of hands to adopt those minutes. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. And number 10 is to authorise a sealing of the following documents the grant of exclusive right of burial numbers uh, 2307, 2308, 2309, 2310. 2311, 2312, and 2313. Uh, could I have a, a second for those, please? I have a second. Sure. Thank you. Can I have a show of hands to fix the seal? Thank you. That's carried. Thank you, Chair. Item number 11 is a review of the standing orders, financial regulations, and code of conduct. This is going to be done in two parts. The first half is to advise the council officers have uh, reviewed the current standing orders, financial regulations and code of conduct, have one additional small correction to make on the financial regulation, section five banking regulations, which I would like to take first. This came to light after the agenda was issued, but as a substantive item is on the agenda and can be considered. I'd like to propose the rewording of paragraph 5.6 of the financial regulations, page 25, which concerns who has authority to use the town council credit cards. The proposal is to change town promotion manager to a state and civic pride manager. May I have a second for that, please? Thank you. Can I ask before you go further, so you just want me to explain that one because obviously it didn't go out on the agenda. So just to have a little bit more um, meat onto that one. Um, it was simply as we were going through them um, that the, um, the RFO, the, the responsible finance officer, discovered that we had the old name of the town promotion officer as one of our signet, one of our users of a credit card. Mm -hmm. And clearly we no longer have that post. So the person who now holds a credit card is actually the civic pride, the estates and civic pride manager. This is simply changing one post name to the other post mm -hmm. name. Nothing else is being done on there. That, that's all it is. Thank you for that clarification. Are there any other comments on that at all? In that case, can I have a show of hands, please? And then that's, thank thank you. you. The two other motions regarding the standing orders review have been submitted by Councillor Pond for consideration. So before I go to Councillor Pond, are there any other matters regarding standing orders that anyone wishes to raise? If not, I then defer to Councillor Pond to make his motions, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you for your councillors. 
Um, so on review of the standing orders um, in discussion with the town clerk, I would like to propose the following amendments. So there's two motions here. We'll take them each in turn. Um, so the first one is in relation to standing order 13A, and this is in, to insert the word being LGA model councillor code of conduct 2020 brackets approved by LGA 3rd of the 12th 2020 as amended, followed following by the words by the council. Um, can I have a second for that, please? Thank you. Any comments on that at all? In that case, now a show of hands to adopt that wording. Against. Against. Abstaining. <coughs> That's a move for motion two. Thank you, Chair. And, and so this is the following addition to the standing order. So we've got currently something in place. So this is addition. This is adding 13H in respect of code of conduct 10.2. All gifts and hospitalities accepted or refused of any value should be added to the hospitality book with an estimated <coughs> value, brackets, if over £25, comma, and where the amount has exceeded £50 in value, that entry should also be made in the declaration of interest, interests within 28 days, which will then be notified to the monitoring officer by the, the proper officer of the council. Can I have a second for that one? Can I have any questions on that? Councillor. Uh, yeah. <coughs> uh, I'm just wondering, Councillor Tom, why we only have um, documents produced by both of the associations or the associations of the council. Why we need to add something that is there? Um, except that it is, because in our um, code of conduct, which is one that's been featured in the public question, um, part 10.2 there deals with the need to um, register any gifts with an estimated value of at least 50 pounds and to register if an offer of a significant gift has been refused. So the two things are there already. So um, I'm just a little concerned that we start writing the words for ourselves and then have to go to the LGA for advice if there's any query on it when they haven't been, they're haven't not party to it <coughs> or anything else, that, that the actual legal interpretation could be quite plenty and difficult and all the rest of it. Whereas if it's words that they got, then they will have a standard that will take the point to protect. Um, and if the aim is to reduce the threshold to £25 from 50 that would be done simply by changing the amount in the in our uh, conduct, which currently says £50. Mm -hmm. So there are two places where we thought it could be in a different place. There's an amount that conflicts with what exists in another part of the document that needs to be complied with. Um, but also, I'm just a little concern with the concise wording of, of it as to how it would apply. Let's say a simple, simple example. I'm, I'm um, a customer of Customer Fish. So the thing with which I was asked, because I was invited to go to Panto because they wanted all the customers to go to Panto. But if this is phrased, the way that it's got into brackets around £25 implies that you have to buy um, everything, because everything needs to register. Every time I send an issue there, I go, please, have I actually got to come in every time and register? So that's why wording is important, and I think we should get the advice of the LGA um, if we're going to make such a change to their agenda. I've got no qualms if the aim is to reduce the threshold from 50 pounds to 25 pounds, I'm sure they would just nod their head and say, if that's what you want, that's what you want. 
and it's coming up with words that could be interpreted different ways where our advisors are not party to what we come for. So I would suggest that if that's the aim, we um, pass this to the OJ for their advice and, and respond accordingly when we are at the contact. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fonda, at the end, we have to go around the room and then we can come back to, to, to you. Um, Councillor Peacock, you raise your hand. Thank you. I think my thoughts are a little bit reactive. Well, along the same lines as Councillor Barnett, um, the first thing I've observed is that these code of conduct come from NAD. They're part of a national framework, and every single council with an England and Wales, as well as we should assume, and we, I think we can assume that, will be used using the standard wording, standard, standard international standard work. So we start tweaking the wording, because what I would say about, I would say, extended analysis, which is discussion for our social education staff, Councillor Barnett comments on check a need. Uh, ironically, check a need used to be owned by the town council directly ever since 2016, and every single councillor was in the management committee of that council of, of Check and Eve. The property is owned by the town council. The CEO was set up. The streamline and management was set up in Perth at a number of large business organisations. A number of councillors, I think it was five at the time, were appointed by a council of the town council at this, at this council meeting, so a similar council meeting, to re represent them in the council. That's, a, that's one example. There are another example I can think of. If we go to an opening of a new building site or a new construction centre where we, <coughs> we might have one or two glasses of champagne, because that's when we get checked in. We've seen the SAPA concert today. You know, that has a tangible value. You've been invited, invited as the town mayor of many of us. That is an honour to be there because that <coughs> is a reflection. So, what I would suggest. We need greater time to consider the full implications because we're devi deviating away from standard national wording and policy. Mm. And secondly, if this is a district where I'm monitoring uh, sort of armies, where there's a committee that would have take, taken time, maybe a couple of months, working with officers and councillors across the political, political spe spectrum to discuss this and go through the ramifications. And obviously, this has been on the agenda for a couple of weeks, but it's been across Christmas, and I, I don't know if all councillors have the opportunity to discuss the unintended consequences. So I've got no issue if you wanted to change the council to 25 pounds, as Councillor Barnett has mentioned, but I think we need to reflect carefully what the unintended ramifications of this went through. So it's not necessarily I'm going to change, what are the unintended ramifications of a, as you say, precipitous a precipitous change that has been discussed within a wider group against the national framework of property. And we wouldn't do this if we were part of a, an international national company. HQ would set what the standard work is, the rules are, and we're in a similar situation. We're accounted within a larger framework of England and Wales. They're my reflections. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any other comments before Councillor Pond comes back on those? Do we want to hear Councillor Pond comes back on any of all of that? Based on the two issues that have been that have been raised, Councillor Barnett and Councillor Peacock, um, the the only the only advice that I can give is obviously I have spoken with the um, monitoring officer of the district council, um, and uh, Councillor Pond and I have, have have worked on the wording to ensure that uh, that the motion did what he he was seeking for it to do. Um, we did have a conversation about um, um, uh, the discretionary. Um, what's the wrong word? Um, the um, can't think of the right word. Um, the interpretation of um, codes of conduct, the interpretation of standing orders, and it does remain and will remain, even with a change, a grey area. And it is down to each and every councillor to determine 
whether they feel something um, is, is affected by the code of conduct. It is down to each and every councillor to make a personal decision as to whether or not, um, as to the value of something that's been accepted. Um, but first and foremost, it's, it comes back down to um, what, what have you accepted and why have you accepted it? Is there any untoward reason behind that? And um, obviously councillors, I believe, are, always have that high in their mind when they when they when they have anything approached to them or they're asked to attend something whether it be check a mood whether it be um any other event um opening of a of a, of a um a new um development or something like that planning um as you all know is something that we are very very careful about and uh, we're always very very cautious um it's it's a difficult one um yes the standing orders do already have these protections in them or alludes to them just not quite in the prescribed manner that um, councillor pond is seeking to to see um a little further clarity it's a really very much a shades of gray area that's why we have the monitoring officer at the district that's why there is the independent panel at the district um so that when there is concern questions can be asked and hopefully the correct and the right advice followed. Um, integrity is, is, is the word. In my view, as the clerk, this council acts with integrity. Um, if councillors feel that a little bit of tightening up to help with the clarification as to that integrity or as to what they are being asked to do, I don't think it's a major concern. But it's not my decision to make. It is your decision to make. <laughs> That's exactly what I've said to you several times, isn't it, Councillor Bond? Um, so it's it's very difficult for me to make any any particular comment. I I don't see major ramifications based on what's being proposed. Um, I can see that there may be some concern as to the the nth degree as raised by um, Councillor Peacock, and I guess it's one of those things that will will come out in the fullness of time. Thank you. Um, Councillor Pond, I think you deserve your time. Yeah. So, so, thank you, thank you, councillors, for those comments. Um, if I can take them to, to in turn, if I could. So, so first of all, this is not really changing anything. And, and what do I mean by that? Our current practice, and I want to address the fifty pound, twenty five pound. When I joined as new councillor, I'm a new councillor. I asked and looked and tried to figure out what it is. Having spoken with the town clerk, it was current process procedure that we would capture in the hospitality book mm -hmm. everything over £25 below £50. Unfortunately, that is not written anywhere. So what this motion, one of the three bits it's doing is actually writing that down. So currently that is to also to protect ourselves and councillors mm -hmm. that there was a process that we all luckily followed. However, it's actually not written in our standing order. So firstly, that £25 is... My understanding is it has been practiced for a number of years, but actually was nowhere in the standing order. So that is not changing per se what we have been doing, but is writing it down so it's very clear, very transparently. Um, secondly, uh, therefore, the other point it makes is £50. That is in agreement and in line with the Code of Conduct. So my motion, again, is not changing anything. It is purely reinforcing what the Code of Conduct says into our standing orders and being very clear and very transparent as to um, what we are to do as councillors. So this is as much to protect us as councillors so we know exactly what to do as it is the transparency and integrity of our uh, electorate. Um, so firstly, so just to reinforce, £25 is what we've been doing. It's just not been written down. The £50 was currently in the Code of Conduct. But... Uh, to the point that Councillor Peacock mentioned, it is a framework. It's a framework we align to. It doesn't tell us how to do things in the nth degree. That is what the standing order is about. They are about taking that framework, and we are an independent body that can make our own decisions within the context of the framework. And therefore, my wording is purely to take that framework, apply that into our standing orders, so that we actually codify exactly what's happening. Um, so I've covered the, the framework, um, and I say there's a lot of grey area, and I think the whole point of this motion is to actually take away that grey area by clearly stipulating 
that everything over £25 needs to go in the hospitality book and that everything over £50 needs to go in the declaration of interest is very clear, very concise, and is in agreement with the Code of Conduct. So, it's up to this one. Great area. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't come back, unfortunately, the way we're, if we're going to stick to, we're on, we're on standing orders, we're going to stick to standing <laughs> orders. Um, so with that round up from Council Pond, that's the end of the debate section for this motion. So can I move to a vote? We have uh, on the table to approve that, it's been seconded, so can I have a show of hands to adopt that point to the standing orders, please? We've, you voted on the first one already. The first one's adopted. <laughs> so we are voting to it's be very clear. This is this is to insert a new standing order 13A being the LGA model councillor code of conduct. Uh, sorry, we've done that bit. <laughs> yeah. Apologies. Um, it was it's the it's the new um, it's the new one, 13H, in respect of Code of Conduct 10.2, all gifts and hospitality accepted or refused or of any value should be added to the hospitality book with an estimated value of over £25. And where the amount has exceeded £50 in value, that entry should be also made in the declaration of interests within 28 days, which will then be notified to the monitoring officer by the book officer of the council. Okay, so we'll, are we all clear what you're voting on now? in the hospitality book and it's only if it's over 25 pounds you have to give an estimated value i'm not sure that's that was my intention i would suggest that can i do a motion to amend you can't you can't amend your own motion <laughs> but somebody else can right so the way we need to do this just to because this is where the setting orders and these sort of debates can get unwieldy okay so your motion your motion currently stands okay um, that would need to go to a vote. What would need to happen is that would, would need to fail I, um, and then be amended? No, I, I don't think, although that's where we actually are in the procedure, okay. if, you, if, you, if you now amend this and take it down, the substantive of it can't then go forward. So you can't do that. What I suggest we do before we go to the vote is we have an amendment. Okay. Um, and um, and we just need to agree on the wording of that amendment. So um, if I can be just absolutely clear, yes. what you're asking, therefore, is that only items of value, estimated value of £25 should be entered into the hospitality book. That's yes, what you're asking. Me, if I can state it now, in respect of code and conduct, 10.2, or gifts and hospitality accepted or refused, over the value of £25 should be added to the hospitality book, full stop. Mm -hmm. Where the where the amount is exceeded £50 in value. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So so what you would like to do is move um, the if over £25 words and you'd like them to be after um, refused. Yes. Correct. Yes. So that it would read in respect of the Code of Conduct 10.2, all gifts and hospitality accepted or refused if over £25 should be added to the hospitality book. Right. right. So what you're asking for somebody to please um, move is an amendment to strike out the words of any value and to replace them with the words which are currently in brackets following the word value, if over £25. And... To, to move that from one point mm. to the other. Is that what you're asking? Correct. Yeah. That's what somebody, which I'm afraid can't be Councillor Pond, as he is the original, the move of the original um, uh, 
uh, motion, so he can't amend it. Somebody else will need to make that amendment, which will then be voted on, and then that becomes a substantive, and then we um, we then vote on the substantive at that point. So, uh, does anybody wish to make that amendment? Uh, make that amendment. Thank you. Um, I have a so second. Thank you. Oh. Okay, so we have that amendment in there mm -hmm. now. Well, can we? No, you need to and vote I, on I the amendment. Can we vote on the amendment. Thank you. This is just on the amendment. That's right. Excellent, thank you. So, that's been carried. so your substantive now reads, I hope I got this right. Everyone listen very carefully now, please. I shall say this only once. Right. <laughs> right. Thank you. Tell me this is right. In respect of Code of Conduct 10.2, all gifts and hospitality accepted or refused, if over £25, shall be added to the hospitality book with an estimated value, and where the amount is exceeded £50 in value, that entry should also be made into the declaration of interest within 28 days, which will then be notified to the monitoring officer by the proper officer of the council. Thank you. Thank you. Just a small order. Yeah. Can anyone come back on that discussion? We discuss it now. That's been amended. Um, they shouldn't come back on the substantive, but if there's anything they wish to say about the amendment, I think it would be all right for you to accept it. So if the amendment has altered your questions or points of views, or you have a question on it, then please say now. Yes, please. Just so I can understand, because this is half moving, and I know the council can't respond, but this is what they were doing at unintended consequences. Yeah. And then I want to say a rather quick process. So, what does this in, in reality mean? Because it's literally Very adding good. some things to the to the book over twenty five pounds. I just want to understand the way. That I believe that that's absolutely right. What you will now be. If I'm correct, and uh, <coughs> this is how I'm going to read this, so <laughs> please tell me if this is not how you understand it. Um, if th this is stating that, therefore, all gifts and hospitality accepted or refused, if over £25, gets added into the hospitality book with mm -hmm. a value, which means amounts of under £25 do mm -hmm. not get added into the hospitality yeah. book, yeah. which is the current position. Yeah. So, therefore, the change is that uh, you will no longer be declaring nominal amounts. So just to clarify for you, Councillor Peacock, and I think I know you want to say something. Uh, thank you, I've just answered this. Is at the moment, this is how we operate yeah. anyway. Yeah. All that this motion is doing is formalising it at this point. And I do think I'll keep them quiet on the matter. Beforehand, it was a bit grey and I didn't get it. That amendment has now just formalised what we currently do. I shouldn't really let you come back on it. Just to be so, we are now just formalising something that can exist. It is not. This is not a significant change as yeah. it was originally. Actually, um, the only difference we now have is that um, any amount which has been accepted or refused. That's the, that's that's one of the, the things. Refused now has an amount. Yes. Um, it's over twenty-five pounds must be included yeah. in the hospitality book. Um, whereas before, you were only required to make any declaration of anything refused over £50 on your declaration of interests. I think the reality here is the numbers of gifts that are accepted or refused by any councillors are actually very, very small. Um, in, the, in any councillor's position when they are mayor, it is treated slightly differently because you go to lots and lots of things. Um, but as regular councillors, it is very, very small. I, I think I've declared a handful of things ever in the in the many years I've done. So, um, please can we move to a vote to adopt this with the approved amendment? All in favour, please raise your hands. Let's take against if you can. Not and against. Them, but that is a carried carried motion. Thank you. I bet you all, when you signed up to be councillors, wanted to be discussing these sort of things, didn't you? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So, item number 12 is to approve the dates of the council meetings for 2024-2025. Um, please recommend, I would recommend that you approve the following dates in 24-25 for full council to meet. Annual uh, Council Monday the 13th of May, Special Council 20th of June, Council 1st of July, Council 7th of October, Council 6th of January, 
Special Council 27th of January and Council 7th of April. Please cast for a second on this. Any questions on that? We have a show of hands to adopt those dates. It's even more fun now. We go on to item number 13, financial risk register. Um, the impact rating on the following <laughs> items has been amended. So I do need me to read all of these out. They're, they're in the agenda, so no, you don't need to read them all out. There are sure a lot, they are in the agenda. Who prefer to see them in the agenda? Because to read them all out will be quite boring, but um, they are all in the agenda. Hopefully you've all read the agenda. Can I propose those? No, I'll second. Second. Any <laughs> questions on those at all? Can I have a statement? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to uh, thank Sam Clark and thank Dan and all the officers for the work they've done about this register. Um, it's a, a really good, uh, it's very reassuring to know that uh, we're in safe hands. Thank you. In that case, uh, can I have a show of hands? Thank you. thank you for allowing me not to read all that out. <laughs> I am slightly dyslexic and reading all those letters in my, <coughs> don't know my eyes now. Right, earmarked reserves. The agenda refers to a request to uh, clear some earmarked reserves. It is clear that reserves are no longer needed. They should be returned to general reserves, or in this case, reallocated as a vehement from one cost centre to another. Movement of reserves is a power reserve for full council. As the Sunnyside Barn Project is needing funds, council are requested to allow them to be bid for this use. I propose that we veer from cost centre 400 slash 4099 DFib batteries £1,000, leaving £3,321 in reserve. Cost centre 999 slash 4182 graffiti removal £2,500, leaving £1,819 in this reserve. This will create a three and a half thousand pound earmarked reserve principally for new tables and chairs at Sunnyside Barn in a new cost centre 300 slash 4061. <coughs> May I have a second for that? I would like to second that. Do we have anyone wishes to speak on this at all? All those in favour? Thank you, Council, for a long meeting, a full meeting, and we had some good council discussions there. Well done. That was that was that was good. Um, in that case, I would like to close tonight's meeting and remind you all that the next meeting at the Town Council is Monday, the 29th of January, for budget and precept. The time is 8:26. Meeting closed. <laughs>